We're temporarily diverting water around where we're going to build our weir. We caught it up here in a pipe and brought it down so that we could build our weir across here. It also drains the area we're going to be working in. So that's a good deal. Are you wet there, Dusty? Yeah, we're kind of in the mud here, diverting the water. It's been snowing on us. And so we're, we're down here in the, in the guck, putting in, we got our standpipe there. And then we're gonna put a pipe over to our barrel. I'm just about to cut that. So, <laughs> it's a pretty day. Should've gotten the snowstorm for you. We're still diverting the water here, but the weir is really starting to take shape at this point and we're diverting the water around it. The standby pipe is in place and the exit pipe is in place. All we need to really do is put the barrel in to collect the water, shape the weir. I think we'll bring the weir a little higher, but uh, once we're done we'll release that and the water will go out into the system. We decided it was a good idea to put a standpipe on the upside of the weir so that it could drain water out below the weir and we could adjust the height, the maximum height the water could go to through the weir. Any excess water would go through this and out and thereby not undermine the weir. So we will see how that works. Here's a different angle on the structure of the weir. You can see the intake pipe that goes off and out over through the hill over there. And this is a standpipe in the middle of frame. It allows air to get into the pipe when you empty it. The plan to bring the water into the meadow and slow it down is working quite effectively as you can see. This is the diversion dam of course, but the behavior will probably be the same once we open it up and let it through the weir. From the weir the water goes underground and drops several feet through the pipe to where it will come out and enter a bridge that fords the creek which runs through here and then reaches the other side of the creek where we continue the pipeline. So on the other side of the creek we're getting ready to put the materials we've gathered together to build the bridge. There will be culvert which is held up by steel wire and inside that pipe will go. Once we come off the bridge it's going to continue out this sort of cut we've made to grade for the pipeline penstock to continue down the hill. Still a long ways to go. Here's where the bridge is going to land on this side. We're putting a foundation that we're going to fill with concrete. We've got some rebar down into the rock here and a form that's going to support the frame. This string shows the trajectory of the bridge the pipe bridge, which will rest on here. There will be a cable that supports it, which sits on top of this, which will sit on top of the pad. And then the wires will be stretched back and anchored to rocks back here. And the pipe will go up through the center of the road and around and down. we got a bit of a production going on here. We're using the backhoe to tighten the cable so that we can drop the uh, concrete in a bucket over there on the other side of the creek to put in a second pier for the pipe bridge. This cable is actually part of the pipe bridge so we're using it for that. We got lucky with the design of the bridge because it allowed us to transport the concrete across the creek without having to carry it. These buckets are probably a hundred pounds a piece and it took numerous buckets to put all of the sports in for the pipe bridge. This is a vertical support uh, pier for vertical support on the pipe bridge. We put the uh, weir together with lag bolts uh, bolting through one to the other and the collection tank is basically an aluminum tank with an adapter to allow the pipe to connect to it. 
We're getting ready to break the dam open so that we can let the water through to go out down through our standpipe so we can get our last section of weir in here that the pipe is in the way of right now. There we go. So the water's draining out of the, the standpipe here, and we've got the weir opening closed, so all the water goes out through there, and it goes out below the weir. So now we can remove the pipe to put this last section of the weir on. All the water is going around the weir through our standpipe. So this tank is actually a truck diesel tank for a semi and uh, we got it from a salvage yard for a song and uh, have customized it with a fitting to go into our pipe for the intake and some seals to be able to drain it and I cut the top out so that I can have a, a screen that fits on top of it. The water will slide down the slide and go over and through a screen into the bucket and the excess will come back out and go out. So that fits on here at an angle and then it'll fit down in here where the water can come down into it and then out the excess out and or intake this way. So our weir bucket is in place now and we've got it mounted at the end here where we're going to use a Fernco coupling to bridge, bridge the gap here and then we'll be able to take it out at some point in the future if we need to. And it's bolted to the weir itself on the back. We're going to have to cut this weir to size to fit the uh, ramp coming into it. The weir is near completion now and all we really need to do is customize this a little bit where the water will come over the top and then put the screen in place here. We decided rather than spending a fortune on a, a valve to close the thing off we would just extend the pipe through into the tank here and then use this cap to seal it to shut the system down. So it's a very inexpensive way of shutting the system down. You don't have to have a really super expensive valve. We've got a fall time snowstorm coming in here and we've got our weir just about done. We put rocks around the base of it here and we cut off our standpipe for air here. This lets air in when you empty the system. And we still may line it with some rubber but we don't know whether they're going to get snowed out or not. We shall see. This isn't really the best conditions to be burying pipe. And we may get pushed out and be unable to complete the pipeline this year. The ground is frozen and very hard to dig. So we have gotten wintered out here. We're going to have to come back in the spring to complete our project. But at least we got the weir in and the start of the bridge and the powerhouse. Springtime will see us back here doing more work.